Hello friends, welcome to this video with reference to the previous video where we saw that what is macro and then what are the main uses of macros and how theoretically we can create the macro, how we can name the macro. Now in this video, I'll be showing you practically that how you can create a macro. So first of all, we'll try to see that how we can record a macro, then how we will use the macro. Let us start in this video, the practical part of macros. So here we are having one table where we are having the employee name, building, department, status, hire date, years, benefits, compensation, job rating, new compensation and tax rate. We are not just so interested in the data part. What I would like to do that here, I would like to, let's say, select one random cell here. And after selecting the random cell, I want to apply the font color, fill color, bold, italic. And suppose if I want to, let's say, create one thick outside border. In general, I want to do the formatting of the cells. So that is what is my requirement. So I've done here the formatting of one of the cell. Now the same thing I want to do it in the other cells. We can definitely do it manually also again and again, but then that will take a lot of time. So what we can do here that we can create a macro and then we can run that macro so that within few seconds the job is done. So here I'm taking a very simple example of how to create a macro. Suppose if your macro is having, let's say 40 steps, 50 steps, 100 steps also, you can definitely record a macro. And if you use the shortcut key for applying the macro, then the macro will be applied and your job will be done in few seconds or let's say one or two minutes. So let us see first of all that how we can record a macro. So for recording the macro, you can either go to the view tab here. In the view tab, we are having this button known as macros button. When I click on the macros button, then we have here view macros and record macro. This is one option. And then we are having another option that is in the developer tab. So maybe some of you may not have the developer tab. So if you would like to have the developer tab, then first of all, what you can do, you can go to the file tab. In the file tab, you go to options. And then when you open your options dialog box, and here you have to go to the customize ribbon. And when you go to the customize ribbon option, then you can see that here we are having the commands and here we are having the customize the ribbon. So what you have to do, you have to put your tick mark over here. You have to tick mark this developer tab. Yeah, mostly you should be having if you are using very old version, then I'm not sure whether you will have the developer tab, but at least from 2000, I think so 16 or 17 onwards or 2019 version, you are having this developer tab. Just put the tick mark over here in the developer tab, click on OK button, and then this developer tab will be available over here. In the developer tab also, we have that same macros button. And we also have here the record macro. These are the two options. You can use any one of this option. So what I'll do now that I will first of all select one random cell here. So I'm selecting the cell where it is written 86,500. Then I go to the developer tab or I can go to the view tab. In the view tab, I click this macros button. And now first of all, what we have to do, we have to record the macro. So I will click on this record macro button. So now here we are having the macro dialog box or record macro dialog box and now first of all i have to give some name now see if you don't give the name then by default it will be showing you macro 1 macro 2 macro 3 so let us give some name here in the presentation which i showed you in the last video there i mentioned that what things you have to take care while naming a macro when you are naming the macro then you cannot put a space between the two words you have to use either underscore or dash and your macro name should not start with a number it should always start with a text. So here I'm writing some macro name formatting underscore cells. Yeah, this is my macro name. So between the two words, I've used here the underscore. You can also use the dash. Now see, later on, if you are writing here one, two, three, four, it is fine. But initially, you should always start with the text. Now here, I have to give the shortcut key. So inside this box, I have to click it. Now see, whenever you are giving the shortcut key, you should be very careful. Let's say we are using a lot of shortcut keys in Excel. Now, one of the shortcut key that we regularly use is uh, suppose Control V. Control V is for pasting or Control X is for cut and Control C is for copying. Now, suppose if I give here the shortcut key, let's say Control V for this particular macro, then what will happen that whenever I'll be clicking that Control V option, then it will run the macro. Now, suppose if I want to even paste something in my Excel file, and if I just press the Control V, then it will always go for the macro. So it will not paste the content in the Excel file. So whenever we are giving the shortcut key, please take care. 
so here what i'll suggest you that you can create a shortcut key or you can allocate a shortcut key which you are not using on a regular basis because in excel there are a lot of shortcut keys some are starting with control some are starting with control plus shift plus something so what i'll do that i'm putting here one of the shortcut key let's say control shift and m m for munich i'm already having here the control option now what i'll do is i'll put my tick mark over here in this box and then i'll be pressing the shift plus m so shift and m so now you can see that we are having this control plus shift plus m so this shortcut key i'm allocating to this particular macro now here it says store macro in in the store macro in if i click the drop down then i'm having here three options personal macro workbook new workbook and this workbook normally we use this workbook but suppose if you want to use this macro in other workbooks also then you have to use this first option known as personal macro workbook so once this macro which you have created or which are going to create if it is stored in this personal macro workbook then you can use it in any of the excel file so in this example let us go for this workbook now here you can give the description now see in the presentation which i showed you in the last video if you have not seen the video on introduction to macros then please check out this video i'm putting the link on the top of this video so in that presentation i also mentioned one point that you can give a very long name to the macro but what is my suggestion that you give a normal name it should not be too long to read so you can give a shorter name over here in the macro name and then what you can do that you can create here a description you can write down here a long description suppose if the description is also written in let's say two to three sentences that is fine yeah so here you can describe that for what purpose you are creating this macro so you can write down the description but if you don't write down the description also it is fine you can keep it blank i'll be clicking now on ok button so before i click on the ok button please check the macro name it should not contain any spaces between the two words you give some shortcut key and also try to remember the shortcut key i'll also show you that suppose if you forget the shortcut key then how to know that what is the shortcut key for this macro that also i'll show you later on so here i've given the shortcut key control plus shift plus m then i have currently stored the macro in this workbook description i'm keeping it currently blank and now i click on the ok button now see i've clicked on the ok button so now what does it mean that now my recording has started so what i'll do now i already selected this cell so i go to the home tab in the home tab i click this font color fill color bold italics and then i also click this thick outside border so now i have applied all this formatting to this particular cell so now my job is done my macro is now ready so what i have to do now i have to stop the recording because currently the recording is going on now i have to stop the recording if i want to stop the recording then i have to go again to the view tab i can click this macros in the macros i can click this stop recording button or i can also go to the developer tab and in the developer tab you can see this same button stop recording so anything is fine so let me click on the stop recording button so now my macro is recorded now what is the next step we have to use the macro so whenever i want to use the macro i can select any suppose these random cells i can also select here three four cells also it is not compulsory that i should select only one cell i can apply the formatting to two to three cells also so i have selected these cells now i have to go for the shortcut key my shortcut key for this macro is Control shift and m so i press here Control shift and m and now you see here that our macro is applied suppose if i select these two cells and here also I, I want to apply the macro so i press here Control shift and m and now here also the macro is applied this is how we are recording the macro and we are also using the macro it's a great concept now suppose if you want to delete this macro for deleting the macro you can go to this developer tab also and you can click on this macros button so here we are having that macro which we have created now i can also delete this macro here now suppose if you forget the shortcut key for a macro then you can come over here to this window and you can click on this options dialog box and when i click on the options dialog box i can see here that what is the shortcut key yeah because many times you may forget let's say you are opening this file after one month you may forget that what shortcut key you had applied or what shortcut key you are, you are allocated here go to this macros tab here by clicking this uh, macros button here in the developer tab and you can click on the options button and then you can see this shortcut key you can also see the description if you want to see now if you want to edit this macros if you remember that in the presentation i also mentioned that you can definitely edit the macros but for that purpose you should know the visual basic so suppose if i click on this edit button so this is that visual basic window and now here 
whatever the steps I had performed, everything is written over here. Now I can change these steps over here if I want to do the editing part. But as I said that you should be very good in Visual Basic. Yeah, some of the things are easy over here in Visual Basic, but most of the time if you are applying some formula or if you are doing something else, then it will be difficult. So what I'll suggest you that rather than going for this Visual Basic coding part, you can just delete the macro. You can also go to the view tab in the view tab. You have this macros button. Click on the view macros here. So you are getting this macros. You can delete this macro and then you recreate the macro. That will be much faster for you. This is what we mean by the macros. Now, one last point before we end up this video that if you are applying the macro to any of the Excel file, then this is a permanent thing. Suppose if you feel that I should not have applied this macro over here, then you can see that here I cannot click the undo and redo button. So it is like a, your permanent marker. If you write with your permanent marker, it is very, very difficult to remove that permanent marker. So here also macro is like your permanent marker. So you have to take care because you cannot undo or redo anything here. And suppose if you do not want to apply this macro over here, yeah, you want to remove these macros from all this cell, then what you can do that you can simply close this file. And once you close the file, it will ask you to save the changes. You say don't save. You click don't save. And when you do not save the changes, then this macro will go away. But remember that when you do not save this file, then whatever the macro that you had already recorded, that macro will also be removed because you have not saved the file. Yeah, suppose if you want to save the macro, first of all, then you create the macro, save this file with that macro, and then you apply the changes. If you do not like the changes, you can close the file without saving the changes, and then you are safe. At least your macro is saved over there. But here, in this example, I have not saved the file earlier. So if I close this file and if I do not save the changes, whatever the macro that I've recorded, that also will get removed and also all these things will also get removed. So friends here, we have seen the practical concept of macros. Now from the next video, we'll be starting a series on pivot table. So pivot table, pivot chart, slicer, these are the very, very important topics in Microsoft Excel. So it will be a big series having around 10 to 12 videos. Let us see in the next video, what is pivot table, what things you have to take care of while creating the pivot table. So it will be an introduction part in the next video on pivot table and then we'll be continuing with the practical part. So see you in the next video. Thank you very much.